Spatial parameters are now available in Tableau 24.3, but in order to use this, I actually had to go on a bit of a learning journey, specifically to understand what the WKT spe special spatial format is inside a Tableau. You can't use lats and longs. And so in this video, I sort of take you on that journey. I show you how the spatial parameter works, and then I show you a couple of use cases with spatial parameters that you can deploy right away. And this is a great addition to the spatial capabilities. They've been on a tear for the last four or five years, this is just yet another capability. As ever, let's get stuck in. So as I've called out, the thing about this feature is actually just the, uh, what I would say, the, the learning curve that you go on about this new spatial format, the WKT format. And the way I started that journey was actually to look at the good documentation from Tableau. You can see here I'm on the page about spatial parameters and operators, and they list it quite nicely. They talk about it up front. So if you've never come across this before, you're definitely going to go on a journey a little bit to understand how to use the spatial format in the parameter. And I think the reason they landed at this is because it's the most optimal thing to put into a parameter in order to be able to uh, use it as a parameter, if that makes sense. So essentially, the way it works is you go ahead and create a parameter as normal. But the WKT format itself is sort of interesting. So what I did is I went on to, of course, Wikipedia. I'll just zoom back out here. And um, there's a really good article here, and it's just basically another format. There's a lot of spatial formats in, in spatial analytics. And the really simple thing to actually just focus on is this, the way that these objects look like. So essentially, these are the things you need to be putting into the parameter for it to work. And so then I started going on the journey. Well, how do I know what the uh, WKT format for the thing I want to do looks like? And I just honestly couldn't find an easy answer. This is one of those things where if you know the topic well enough, you just know the resources that will tell you this answer or you'll have the tools to give you this answer. But if you don't know this topic, if you're new, you're just trying to build something on Tableau Public, frankly, you need a website that does it for you. So I spent 30 minutes and I found this one. This is the reliable one. And for each one, what I did is I tested their output put it in Tableau, and for some reason, all of them but this one generated exactly what Tableau needed. So I think it's maybe just, you know, the internet resources maybe not being great. I found this, and what this website does is it allows you to play around with the different spatial formats, the line, points, and polygons, in the WKT format. So as a simple example, um, you can see I've got this dot here on um, Los Angeles and it's given me the point. Additionally, I can uh, draw a line here by just doing this. And if, as, as soon as we did that, um, we can get the line string for that line. Additionally, we can then say, okay, let's go ahead and draw uh, this uh, this shape. And I think what I did there, I didn't actually complete it properly. So there I've drawn the triangle a little bit more. And as you draw it out a little bit more, you can see that the uh, polygon here changes. So um, you can see why this is the preferred format for parameters. It's actually super interesting to see this format. And then of course you can, yeah, I think you can draw a square as well. That also works. So um, yeah, this is what I've used. And what I'm doing in this demo is I'm essentially using the points here and I'm taking them. Now, the reason you want to do this is because um, if you try and load a spatial element from, let's say, a data source, what you're going to find is some of the spatial formats we've been used to generate really large polygons, really large strings in this format. And I think it caused the performance issues. I actually got stuck myself trying to figure out how to do this. And I just managed to get Tableau to use up all the resources on my M3 Max laptop. It's not like a, a small or underpowered laptop by any means, but we were just maxing out the resources. So I give that preamble because I think when you go and start building this, you might fall into those same traps, but I'm going to link to all the resources that I've uh, shown you here so far so you can use them to ground your understanding. Okay, now we've got the context out of the way. Let's head back to Tableau and let's actually start building this. So the way I've done this is actually uh, quite simple. There's a couple of things we can do. Uh, the first thing is you can just go ahead and let us build a, a map. Let's just do this very, very quickly. Just double click on city. And yes, I'm using Superstore. So many people critique me for using like not real world data sources. But honestly, to make this video is under 15 minutes, this is all I can do because I know you know how to find Superstore. So um, I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to go ahead and drop sales on size. And um, I'm going to just uh, make this a little bit larger. I'm going to do some formatting just for legibility's sake here. We're going to go ahead and use a range. We're going to drag this up. I'm going to bring that up so the big things are a bit larger and the small things a little bit more obvious. And then we'll go ahead and do a white circle around these just so that it looks a bit more interesting. And then actually I'll dial that back down to that point there. I think that's a good looking map. Let's move on. Now, 
In order to use this feature, we have to create the parameter. So let's first go ahead and create a parameter. And to do this, you'll just go ahead and do this. And we'll go ahead and say spatial. Um, I always actually recommend doing this really early on. And if you go down to the data type, you'll see there's a new option here, spatial. And uh, there's a couple of ways you can use this uh, parameter. First of all, you can just allow all values. What this will do is it will allow you to feed in a value into this parameter. So if you're using a parameter action and you want your uh, work but to feed in a WKT polygon into this, then you can do that. And that allows you to store these WKT strings as uh, text objects inside of your uh, data source, but then you can push them into the parameter as a way of working. Now, the other thing is you can load it from a data source. So you can go ahead and select the list and that allows you to save multiple ones. I'll come to that in a second. But yes, when a workbook opens, you can say to Tableau, hey, when this workbook opens, go and load it from a, spa a spatial file. Now, I don't have one in Superstore because although Superstore has these geographical fields, you can see country is a geographical field here with the little globe icon. These are not real spatial objects inside of Tableau. So in order to get this to work, we're going to have to go into the data source. We're going to go and add uh, a spatial file. And I went and downloaded a spatial file for the United States. Let's go ahead and select that. Uh, and if you drag that in, we're going to do a relationships. If you haven't uh, done a data model before, go ahead and check this out. This is actually quite simple. All we're going to do is say that, look, a state on the Superstore data set is equals to uh, the name on the spatial file. And that will uh, essentially do like a, a match with the strings. But the string on the right also has spatial data that comes with it. So that relationships allows us to use the spatial objects in this uh, logical table here for our orders, peoples, and returns, because it's all related. So that then means we go back into the sheet. We'll just give this a little bit of time. We now have uh, sort of grafted on a geometry. This is a real geometry. This is a polygon in this specific instance that can actually be used. And so if we go back to our parameter option, let's just go ahead and create that parameter again. Um, we go back in here to spatial, we go to list, and you go when workbook opens load from, you can see the geometry is right there. Now. Big warning, don't do this. <laughs> don't do this because the spatial objects I found are really detailed. And whenever I try to do anything with these spatial objects, especially all the states in the United States, it just took way too long. I've already mentioned the performance issues. This is where I stumbled across it. So based on my understanding where we are today, if you don't have an ability to build the, um, what I would say the, um, the shape files in a more optimal way by reducing the number of points on the polygon so it's a little bit more performant. Uh, something like Alteryx can do that, but if you don't have that ability, what I'd actually recommend you do is you stick with the list. And because these are parameters, you can actually invest a bit of time into building these once and then just having them available in your workbook. They're not a data source, so they can you know, just persist in your workbook without needing to be updated. So that's actually quite a useful thing. And the parameters are available in the entire workbook, right? It's available to every sheet. It sits outside of the data sources. So that's what we're going to do. We're not going to load from anything else, actually. We're just going to uh, select this fixed option and then that will allow us to add. So <laughs> now that we have done that, you can see why this is a little bit more complex. Let's go and let's just try and uh, create some uh, polygons. We'll choose Los Angeles. I'll sort of copy uh, that. Uh, I could have, um, uh, yeah, let's just copy that. Let's go back in here. And what I'll do is I'll double click that, paste, and then I need to hit tab for some reason on the Mac Apple Silicon. If I, if I hit enter, it kind of clears it. And then the thing here is that when you paste the parameters, this is normal behavior, it just names it after whatever's there. But because you're using polygons here, you definitely don't want this to be what the user sees. So here, what we'll say is we'll say Los Angeles. Uh, I think that will do for now. And then we can go and get another one. Now, something I haven't tried, we're gonna try this in real time together. I'm gonna draw a polygon, okay? So I'm gonna draw this slightly strange polygon here. And we're just going to do this. We're going to take the Los Angeles area. Okay. And once we've got that, I'm just going to grab all of this again. We're going to go back to Tableau. And the nice thing about this is because this is that we previously used a point here. I can actually paste this, go to the next one. And now I've got a point and a polygon in the same parameter. This is quite handy because you can actually mix between different uh, spatial types. I don't know if it will work. I don't know if it will complain and say, hey, I'm mixing types when I start to do calculations. If it does, we'll just change it back to a point. But I'm going to leave that there for the purpose of this video. So now we have two points. So we can go ahead and click OK. 
now we pretty much good to go. I did something very bad. I did not name my uh, spatial parameter. Let's call that spatial right away. And now that we've done that, let's go ahead and hit OK. So we've got spatial. Um, we're going to actually show this parameter here so you can see it there. Los Angeles. Um, you don't have a drop down option. I don't know why that is. I don't know why we can just have a drop down selection. So I'll choose a single value list. Um, and again, I did not name in my uh, Los Angeles region elements. So gosh, you can tell I have really bad habits that just stuck with me for a long time. So let's delete that <laughs> awfully long name. I should have done it when I actually created it. Um, so if I just do that and just say, I don't know, uh, LA area. So we've got Los Angeles, the place, and then we've got the LA area. Um, and we can just use that. And you can see these two working quite nicely. So the next thing I need to do is to create a buffer. Now you're probably wondering why on earth do I need to create a buffer? Well, we want the buffer to be driven by this parameter. And so if you've been watching the videos over the last few years, you'll know that all of these spatial tricks that we've been sort of teaching you all along the way now come into effect here because we need to bring them together. So the first thing is the buffer function. What the buffer function does is essentially create a buffer around a spatial object. In this case, we're going to use our spatial parameter. You can see that it comes up there as I start to type. And then we're going to need to say the number. So we'll just say, let's draw a 100 mile uh, area. And the way we do miles is we just say um, miles in there like that. So that is now valid. We'll call this the buffer. Okay, and so we'll just say apply and hit okay. There is our buffer. Uh, if we actually want to visualize that, we can go ahead and put it on a map layer, a nice new feature. Uh, when we do that, let's just make it red so you can more easily see it here in this tutorial. So now we're on the Los Angeles area. And if I just go and click on LA, um, oh no, that kind of breaks. What does it say? Um, the axis has one mile value. Let's see how long the axis has one mile value. Oh, why is that breaking? I, I think it does not like the polygon. So let's go back. Let's go back. I think I was being too optimistic. Let's choose a radically different um, uh, place. Let's go to New York. Let's choose New York as an area. So let's go ahead and put this here. We'll go ahead and grab that and we'll replace that um, item that we got wrong. Let's go ahead and select this and go and remove the selected version. That's a quick way of doing that. Paste that in. And then here we can say, uh, hey, this should be NYC and hit apply and hit OK. Good. So now we've got Los Angeles. Switch over to New York. It works. It didn't like the multi polygon. Fine. We tried. It didn't work. But now you can see this is happening. Now, the reason I want to use this parameter is actually to switch between these to almost create a zooming effect with this parameter. So you've got this nice highlighter, which is great from an analytics perspective. In fact, this is already working. It's already doing what we want. But to really get to sort of that nice UX that you typically use parameters and uh, sets for whatever you want to use them for. Um, we're going to go one step further. So to go one step further, we're going to go ahead and create a calculation. And this one, I always get confused. So there, there's a couple of spatial uh, functions. So we go to the spatial area and we select intersects. Intersection returns a polygon. Intersects returns a Boolean. We want the Boolean because we want to use this as a filter. So if we double click intersects and we say that, look, hey, our buffer um, needs to intersect with our spatial parameter. So let's say... This is what it is. And so what basically what we're doing is we're saying anytime these two intersect, um, keep that as true in the filter space. And of course, they're going to match because they're basically being driven by the same thing. The buffer has the spatial parameter and the spatial parameter is changing. So it's, it acts like moving our thing. We're also moving the buffer function at the same time. So it kind of works. So we'll call this intersection boolean. We'll hit apply, hit OK. Now we can take that into the filters and we'll just keep true. Of course, it always works true. So what I should really do here, if I just think about this, let me just think about this for one second. I mean, I think it's fine. I think we could just keep it like that. And if we just, OK, this is not doing what I expected it to do. I think I've written something just slightly wrong. So what have I done wrong here? So what I, th I think, I think what I needed to have done is instead of doing the buffer, I should have done the geometry um, from the spatial file that we've got attached, if that makes sense, um, to make sure that those overlap. So let me just hit apply and see how that uh, changes the viz. You can see it's thinking about it in the background. There we go, that's done what I did. So in a funny sort of way, for the zooming effect to work, we needed to use the spatial object. Um, the the 
the the reason that true was always true is because visually speaking the uh, spatial parameter was always actually overlapping with um, itself if that makes sense that's essentially what i put into the formula whereas this because the um uh, let's say the uh, region um the spatial objects that drive the states which is what i'm using as my spatial object overlap with the buffer it's zooming into the buffer because it's just trying to show us this uh point which that is true if that makes sense so um if i actually go to edit this you'll see that i do get a true and a false i can actually focus on the false if i wanted to um but then now that we've got that zooming effect you can see we can go over to los angeles and it switches over so this is actually quite nice because you can create a, a nice focal point maybe you want to zoom in on sales people you can play around with this buffer you can play around with lots of different uh, elements of this if we if we increase the size of the buffer you could actually even um if you know if we're being uh, really really smart we could say hey uh, can you create me another uh, buffer parameter right uh, we can say okay and then instead of using that item uh sorry not that one let's go to our buffer itself and instead of using that, let's actually uh, uh, say that we can change this with our buffer parameter. So we can just go, hey, go use buffer. So two parameters uh, being driven there and say, OK. And now this is going to break because we've made it a very, very tiny one mile radius. You can't almost see it. But if we uh, show this parameter and then we say, OK, let's make it 200 so it's larger than before then um, this is working nicely. So we can create something way more dynamic, um, which is kind of really, really nice. We're using the spatial parameter to be able to drive this behavior behind the scenes. And then we can change uh, sort of uh, what we're focusing on as well, which is which is really nice, I, I think. And you could even, at least with this um, value, you could even go, um, I know you can't use a slider. I guess you can't use a slider in this specific sense. Um, I, Sometimes I get so confused why you can't do certain things. For example, here, why can't I have a, a drop down? And here, why can't I have the slider that I can see there? Why would I have a slider on, on text values but not have a, a freaking slider here anyway? Doesn't matter. That's Tableau. So that's the spatial parameter. I think it takes a little bit of sort of getting around in terms of thinking through your use case. You need spatial objects for this to work really, really well. Um, I'll just call out that when you have uh, things like country, region, state, city, these are detected spatial elements. So Tableau maps onto them geographic globes, but they're not in fact geometries. Geometries have to be things like lines and polygons. Again, if we go back to our um, well-known uh, text uh, page here, points, line, string, polygons, multipoint, all of these are actual things. And so they have ways of being defined in this WKT format, which I think is actually quite nice. You have the ability to be quite specific about the different ways you specify that. But uh, nonetheless, that is pretty much the spatial parameter. Um, I think it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but there are some fantastic use cases if you can bring together all the mechanics that we've had over the last four years with spatial capabilities, bring it together with this new spatial parameter. And now you're talking. As ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.